عيسى ابن مريم يا حبيب محمد بشرت يا روح الإله بأحمد صلى عليك الله في عيائه يا ابن البتول خليل كل موحد imagine Allah. He is infinite. I can't, I can't put my hand around that. I have a finite mind. I'm going to understand Allah. The only way I understand Allah is how He reveals Himself through Scripture. That is it. Because my mind, I've had heard Imam Zia here say it so many times, and that is this. It's like my mind is a little paper cup. How can the infinite Allah, if if he even tries to put a drop in me, I will explode trying to understand him. And my father, he says, when I was in my fourth standard, he once suddenly asked me, what do you want to become after you grow up? And I told him I want to become the president of America. <laughs> and, and believe me, I have not lost that hope still. <laughs> no Muslim is a Muslim. If he does not believe love and respect Jesus Christ may peace be upon him as much as he loves believes and respects Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him as a Muslim it is an obligation upon me to love Jesus Christ as much as I love Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him <laughs> لا والد لم يولد Such great numbers. This is a real honor to have you here. And it's a real honor that Renaud thought of us one more time. You may be aware that Renaud has uh, frequently brought groups from the church to the mosque. And many of the groups have benefited from there. So tonight's event, it's... Uh, let me uh, straighten uh, this issue up that it's not a debate okay so it's not a who is right who is wrong kind of situation it is basically focusing on the commonalities that we have with each other okay so what's going to happen tonight we're going to have uh, uh, Renaud who is you all are familiar with him he's going to introduce himself and he's going to speak for 30 minutes and then we're going to have our speaker from India his name is Imran and he's going to speak for 30 minutes following that there'll be a Q&A session and all the questions they'll be written on the index cards that have been placed on your chairs for you if you don't get an index card raise your hand and we'll provide it for you and if you need a pen or anything also raise your hand and that will also be provided for you so without further ado we can continue the program thank you Salam alaikum <laughs> Uh, my name is Renaud Bijani. I am founder and uh, executive director of IHOPE. And uh, uh, tonight the topic uh, uh, is uh, uh, Jesus Christ, or as you know him, uh, Isa al-Masih, uh, his identity and uh, what the Christian view is. Uh, so I'll be presenting the Christian view of who Jesus is and uh, I will uh, 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 speak through a lot of uh, uh, scripture from the Holy Bible uh, but I'm going to be turning to a lot of scripture so I just put it on, on here so I can save my 30 minutes because you can time me 30 minutes and I'm, I'm going to do it right out of here and uh, after uh, I open up uh, uh, in uh, prayer, uh, a Christian prayer, uh, then I'm going to ask ask uh, um, for the handouts to be uh, to be handed out for anyone who is uh, interested um, so I am just so thankful so privileged to be with here with you tonight um, it is uh, it's a blessing I was blessed when uh, uh, brother Najib uh, called and said let's uh, do this event and uh, bless that uh, 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 Imam Zia and uh, Irving uh, Center uh, or Islamic Center of Irving uh, was willing to host this event tonight and uh, to especially on this subject matter that's near to me as, as, as a follower of Jesus. Uh, so if you don't mind, 
uh, I'm thankful that you've given us the opportunity, given me the opportunity to pray, uh, to open up after your uh, lovely pl- prayer. So uh, we're g- I'm going to pray in uh, Jesus' name. So if you don't mind, please just bow your heads with me and close your eyes as I pray. Um, Allah, I am just so thankful for this gathering tonight, for this masjid, for every person that who is here tonight. I just pray that Allah, your Holy Spirit, will fill our hearts and our minds, our souls, open up our eyes to see what it is that you want us to see, Allah. Especially on the subject of Isa al-Masih, Lord, we just pray that we submit our hearts to you, our minds and our souls, that you guide us, you give us the wisdom to know what it is that you want us to know, and you give us the humility to follow through on the path that you want us to have. Thank you, Allah. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to start by introducing myself. and It is part of the talk. And the reason why I want to do that is because uh, uh, 10 years ago, I couldn't imagine myself uh, uh, speaking. Uh, with Muslims brothers and sisters and the reason why is because at that point I had a lot of anger and hate in my heart and I'm ashamed to say that but I can say that now boldly because I know what Jesus has done in my heart and now I can uh, say that I love you I can't wait to see a Muslim somewhere just so I can share the love that Jesus has put in my heart for Muslims but uh, so I'm going to start out to share how, what happened, what brought me to that point where I had this anger and hate. You see, I was born in Iraq. Uh, uh, we lived uh, uh, in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Libya, so all of that Middle East, uh, uh, Middle East and North Africa areas. And uh, 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 my mother would preach to me from the Bible and she would teach me and at age four I think I started uh, uh, it's like Allah was preparing me for moments like this so as a child I would go out in the streets of Baghdad bored and just start saying something about Jesus as loud as I could I was probably a very obnoxious (laughs) four-year-old and uh, I remember Muslim friends just looking at me uh, with a smile, with warm hearts, uh, knowing I was just an innocent child. But there's always one. And at four years old was the first one. An extremist, um, didn't like probably what I was saying. I couldn't understand all what he was saying. I just remember calling me uh, kafir. I didn't understand what that meant for the English speaker. That means I was infidel. and. Uh, uh, didn't understand everything that he was saying. All I know is that he beat me. He said he was going to kill me, took me to the top of the building, and dropped me by my ankle, just holding me on the side of the building, and said that he was going to kill me. Thanks to Allah, he changed his mind, put me back. But uh, uh, as I didn't understand these things, and as we moved through these different countries, I kept doing the same thing. Didn't know what I was supposed to stop because I didn't understand. And there was always one. Everybody else was wonderful. But there was always one. And the the same thing kept happening to me for seven years. Then when I was 10 years old, I understood all of a sudden. It's like, now I know what this means. And I'm ashamed to tell you that anger and hate sprang up in my heart. And then it got worse from there, because then I was in the streets of Beirut, Lebanon, when the civil war between Christians and Muslims started in 1975. And I was right in the middle of that. I was an angry, hateful young man. But Allah took me out of that, brought me to the United States, but in high school, I took all that anger and hate and I uh, directed it toward Allah and I denied him and I walked away. But, Allah redeemed me and I for me I became a a Christian again by September 11 2001 and then as what usually happens when someone becomes a follower of Jesus again uh, uh, I didn't realize that I still had a lot of anger and hate in my heart and that event that day brought it up and then that's when the transformation began 
Allah's Holy Spirit start working on my heart slowly but surely. By 2008, I thought I was going to die. I tried to die, and uh, but Allah again miraculously saved me repeatedly that year. And finally, I just submitted. Said, what is it that you want from me, Allah? You saved my life miraculously. What do you want from me? And that's when we started, I hope. And he said, I saved you for all of this. And that is to go out there. Because at that point, I start realizing something happened because I love Muslims. And it was about going out and sharing the love of Jesus with Muslims because he put that love in my heart. And I am proud to say now that through the years, now I have hundreds of Muslim uh, uh, brothers and sisters that I call, can call brothers and sisters. By 2012, it seemed like Allah wanted me to do something else. I said, all right, Allah, what is it that you want me to do? He said, look at all the anger and hate that Americans and Christians in America seem to have for Muslims. So that's when I started teaching. I didn't know what, the, what Allah would do. But from there, I can tell you that I didn't know a whole lot of people. But since then, it's like I'm teaching uh, uh, Christians and Americans to love on Muslims. And I'm teaching in Christian seminaries. I'm teaching in Christian universities. Churches started inviting me. We've had over 7,000 students since then that have graduated through our classes. And... Another thousand are in the process right now. And their job, and what Allah put me on here for, is for them to love on Muslims. So that brought us here today. So today I am here to share the Christian view, my view, of who Jesus is. And what I'm going to focus on is who Allah reveals him to be, as far as I'm concerned, in, through the Holy Bible. So, uh, uh, to me, as a Christian, as I started uh, following Jesus, I start realizing that there was a reason. So, I, as I looked through Scripture and I was searching before Allah redeemed me again, I started seeing that there was a reason why it had to be done that way, and Allah revealed it to me in the Holy Bible. So, to my Christian friends, I'm going to address you just for a quick second. I will be saying Allah tonight when I refer to God, because that's what I know. Allah is the Arabic word for God, just like uh, uh, Elohim is, uh, it is uh, God in, in Hebrew, or Allahi is in the Aramaic. And then I'll refer to Jesus Christ as He's al Masih, because that's what it is in Arabic. That's what I know him as such. So, uh, with this in mind, I will start reading right from Scripture, uh, the Holy Bible. So. I will read more just to make sure that I am staying on time and these are scripture that I will be reading. I will say a few comments every now and then but I'm going to try to stick with scripture uh, as much as possible. So uh, in the Holy Bible, the, uh, uh, Allah reveals what the, first it's about his word. So as he talks about his word in 2 Timothy, and this is what I believe as a Christian, it says all scripture is breathed out by Allah. And then I selected four scripture. He does it throughout the Holy Bible. But he says, Allah says, uh, As for Allah, His way is perfect. The word of Allah is flawless. I'm going to ask the handout, just in case anybody wants it to, please go ahead and start passing it out so people can look at these scripture because this is going to be a lot of information just in case you want to uh, verify it later. Uh, in Isaiah 40, Allah says this about his word, the word of our Allah will stand forever. In Mark, he says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And then in John, it says, scripture cannot be broken. So I believe what these scripture tell me about uh, uh, Isa al-Masih. And uh, one scripture that summarizes it for me as a Christian and for many Christians is found in John chapter 1. So I'm going to read those to you. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Allah, and the Word was Allah. He was in the beginning with Allah. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made and the word became flesh and dwelt among us we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only son who came from the father no one has ever seen Allah 
But the only Allah who is at the Father's side has made him known. So as I was searching and started seeing these scriptures, I realized that Allah was saying several things here. Uh, actually, five different things. I'm going to only address three of them. So the scripture in the Holy Bible uh, confirms the oneness of Allah. There is no Allah but Allah. And uh, there is only one Allah. It also, uh, uh, it seems like Allah refers to him as father, refers to himself as son. So, uh, and that's uh, sprinkled throughout uh, scripture. And also st Allah states in this scripture right here that Isa al-Masih is the only Allah that was at the father's side. Now, um, so the Holy Bible, the way I see it, is this story of Allah and the creation that he made humankind especially in terms of uh, uh, how uh, he relates with us why this had to happen as far as Isa al-Masih and who Isa is um, but to get a clearer view of that I usually just like with me my journey I had to start in the beginning so right in the beginning where scripture started as far as the Holy Bible it says in uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 3, it focuses on the first human sin that humankind did. And it's talking about Adam and Hawa, that's Eve. It says, after they sinned, immediately we see uh, for us in the Holy Bible that uh, Allah was pointing toward Jesus. So immediately it says, and Allah made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. So that was the first recorded atha for us, or uh, sacrifice of an animal. And it was immediately like Allah was pointing to what was going to happen <laughs> 1,500 years later uh, when Jesus was going to come on earth. And then in Genesis chapter 4, or Surah 4, uh, he's pointing us to, to, uh, to that again by revealing the story of Cain and Abel. And this is what the scripture says. And when it was time for the harvest... Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to Allah. His brother Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. Allah accepted Abel and his gift, the lamb, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. So right from there, uh, through also hundreds of other stories, what I believe is that Allah was pointing us to the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that he would accept, and that is wh who we see as uh, Isa al-Masih, or Jesus Christ. And then 400 years later, in Genesis uh, uh, chapter 12, it starts the story of Abraham, or Ibrahim as you know him, as I know him in Arabic. And uh, 400 years after Abraham, uh, some of his descendants were slaves in Egypt. And then the story there, as Allah is bringing them out of Egypt in Exodus Surah 12, again, he tells us sto the story where he was pointing them to what needed to happen with Isa al-Masih. It says in Exodus 12, each family, this is Allah commanding them, he says, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for an adha, sacrifice, one animal for each household. The animal you select must be one year male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. Then the whole assembly of the community must slaughter their lamb or young goat. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the house. On that night, I will ex execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am Allah. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague of death will not touch you when I strike. So Allah was, to me, as a Christian and Christians, he was already pointing us to that Passover lamb that he calls Isa al-Masih. And, um, um, and the blood of Isa al-Masih, we believe, is what protects us, just like he was pointing us in uh, Exodus 12, and uh, he redeems us into paradise through that sacrifice. Now, uh, when Isa al-Masih came on earth, we fast forward in Holy Scripture to, uh, 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 to John 12. Uh, uh, and just before he was about to be sac sacrificed, Isa al-Masih says the following. He said, should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? 
But this is the very reason I came. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. But despite all the miraculous signs Isa had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. Many people did believe in him, but they wouldn't admit it for the fear of the Pharisees would expel them. Now, Isa was addressing some doubters uh, after uh, uh, his resurrection, and Allah reveals the following in Luke chapter 24. It said, Then Isa said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures? Wasn't it clearly predicted that Al-Masih would have to suffer all of these things before entering his glory? Then Isa took them through the writings of Musa, Moses, and all the prophets, explaining from the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then I want to share this uh, ayah from, uh, from that same chapter, just because I love to share this with my Muslim friends, and I share it with joy. It says, Isa al-Masih was suddenly standing there among his followers, and he said, Assalamu alaikum. That's the first time right there in scripture Jesus said it. <laughs> so as I was uh, searching uh, over uh, 10 years ago, uh, or actually 15 years ago, what, two questions came to mind as I was searching through the scriptures. Why did Allah, this is my belief and my question, why did Allah have to come to earth as Al-Masih, the son of Allah, to be sacrificed? Uh, why Allah, the most merciful, forgiving, could not merely say to, to anyone, I forgive you, apart from the sacrifice of Isa al-Masih. Because that's, that's what I see the scripture were saying and what Christians believe. And as uh, for me, the scripture that we read already points to some of these things. But uh, uh, for me, uh, uh, what we saw, we see in Romans chapter 3, one of those passages that summarizes it succinctly together. This is what Romans 3 says about this. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of Allah has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Isa al-Masih to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Allah. And all are justified freely by His grace through the re redemption that came by Isa al-Masih. Allah presented al-Masih as a sacrifice, an atha of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. It says, he did this to demonstrate his righteousness. And then it repeats it again. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time. So as to be just and the one who justifies uh, those who have faith in Isa. So in this passage, Allah uh, summarizes seven things. I'll share uh, six of them with you. And that's Allah talking about himself. He says that he is righteous. He is holy. And he repeats that repeatedly. And then he tells us the other thing is that he is a just and fair judge. So, and he says through other scripture that as a righteous and just and fair judge, he says, I cannot break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said. And in Deuteronomy, referring to himself, he says his deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful Allah who does no wrong. How just and upright he is. And then in the passage we read in Romans, it says, for all have sinned. Well, the thing is, right from the beginning of Scripture, Allah was always uh, revealing his eternal and perfect law and how he deals with sin. And right from the beginning, he says, the soul who sins shall die. And again, he repeats in Romans, the passage uh, close to where we read, the wages of sin is death. And then Allah reveals through this passage that he is impartial. So he cannot show favoritism. He repeats it throughout scripture. I'll read James 2.9. He says, uh, uh, Allah reveals there that favoritism is wrong. He says, but if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin and you're guilty of breaking the law. So in this uh, passage in Romans, Allah is saying to us as Christians that he has to honor his own perfect eternal law. So as 
he is f uh, uh, full of grace, as it says, and forgiveness. He says, Allah has freely given redemption through faith in Isa al-Masih to all who believe. So uh, this perfect judge to me, as a Christian, cannot just say, I forgive you apart from the sacrifice, because through that sacrifice, Allah perfectly demonstrated the balance between his righteousness, impartiality, grace, love, just, and the way for justification. Um, so in later in scripture, it says, uh, this is what we believe about Isa al-Masih scripture, in scripture. So in John 3.18, uh, Allah reveals the following about Isa al-Masih. He says, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in Allah's one and only son. In John 14, 6, Isa says the following. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. In Acts 12, Allah reveals this following regarding Jesus. He says, there is no salvation in no one else. Allah has given no other name under heaven by which one must be saved. And then in Hebrews, it tells us this about Isa al-Masih, about his second coming. He says, he will come again to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. So. So as a Christian, when I struggled through these uh, scripture and I read and s studied through them, uh, then it led me to, uh, to Romans 10, 9 through 11. And this is something that Christians believe, is that if you confess with your mouth that Isa is Lord and believe in your heart that Allah raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with Allah. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. And, and then in September 11, 2001, I believed. But I saw that I had anger and hate. And I, Allah started convicting me of that. And then I realized through scripture like what I'm about to read that believing is only the beginning. It doesn't end there. Because uh, uh, first Allah convicts us through the Holy Spirit. And he was convicting me by living per sinful human nature. Uh, he says that a lot, but I'm going to focus on Galatians 5. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery. So for me, I would say, Allah, I'm, I'm not doing these things anymore. I'm good. <laughs> but not so fast, it says, because then it continues about sinful nature. It says hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger. I was really feeling convicted. Uh, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, and it says on other sins like these, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of Allah. So I said, Allah, then what do I do? I'm guilty of these things. My Muslim friends, you know it as jihad, internal struggle. I'm guilty of that internal struggle. But then Allah continues in Galatians 5 right after that. And he says that as a follower of Jesus, then he starts filling me with the Holy Spirit that enables me to live as a disciple of Esau. And he started transforming my heart into these things. And this is what the scripture says. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. He repeats a lot of gifts there, and I'm going to read them. But he says, if you don't have love, you have nothing. Mm, I was convicted, especially toward my brother, my Muslim brothers and sisters. So he says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those who belong to Isa al-Masih have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And as I started living that, that's when things really turned around for me and the Lord 
put that love for me. And this is my prayer tonight as I close. And I probably did it in less than 30 minutes, hopefully. <laughs> um, and that is this. I pray that first my challenge is to every Christian here. You've got to fill your heart with the Holy Spirit. You've got to plead with Allah's Holy Spirit to fill you. Because if you're here tonight with suspicion, anger, or hate to any, especially to our Muslims and brothers and sisters, then repent. And you've got to be a channel of Allah's love, of the, of the love of Jesus toward our Muslim brothers and sisters. And I pray that a lot of you will engage each other tonight and start an Allah spiritual centered relationship with each other. That's part of what the, Allah had me start the ministry and that's part of what we teach uh, nationwide. And as I close, I'll say again, may Allah's Holy Spirit fill us and guide us toward the righteous path. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most compassionate. I, Muhammad Kamal, would like to request you your permission to introduce to all of you the Muslim speaker of this evening, inter-religious dialogue to be held, if God <coughs> willing, today, the 3rd December 2016, Saturday, on the topic, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in Christianity and in Islam. At the Islamic center of Irving, in this beautiful and the most diverse land, United States of America, and the most diverse city of Irving, Texas. Mr. Mustaba Hussein Siddiqui, is popularly known as Brother Imran and he shall be the Muslim speaker of this evening's interreligious dialogue. <coughs> Thankful to Allah the Almighty, Brother Imran is an, he is from India, he is an Indian Muslim and is from the Hyderabad city of India. He was a student of public administration, political science and history from the prestigious Nizam College of Hyderabad. During his job in Riyadh in the American company Toys R Us, Mr. Brother Imran was introduced to the legendary Muslim orator on the comparative religion, uh, Sheikh Ahmad Idad. This motivated Brother Imran to return to his homeland, India, for good and take up Islamic dawah that is conveying the message of Islam to Muslims and non-Muslims alike as his full-time job. With the power of Almighty Allah, in February 1998, Brother Imran as a founder president established the IREF Islamic Research and Educational Foundation as a registered society with the government of India and since then he is in the field of Islamic Dawa in the legacy of Sheikh Ahmad Didat. Thankful to Allah in August 2004 brother Imran was invited as a guest of US State Department and that was his first visit to our beautiful country, United States of America. Impressed by the freedom of speech and the freedom to discuss the commonalities and the differences of each other's religion, religious belief and the view in the United States. After 2004, Brother Imran had traveled to USA at least four times and he also visited the different parts of the uh, the country in his previous visit to united states of america he has delivered talks to the american army at the fort knox army base at kentucky on the subject of jihad in islam and has interacted with our respectable fbi officers in chicago on many occasions back in india brother imran 
through the Hyderabad City Police voluntarily counsels the misguided youth arrested for terrorism activities. He has also spoken to the Australian Federal Police on the subject of Jihad in Islam. Through his public talks and interactions with the officers, Brother Imran tries to clarify a lot of misconceptions about Islam and answers allegations against Islam to both the common public masses of non-Muslims and Muslims and also the dignified officers of law and order agencies. Both the public and officers appreciated Brother Imran's logical, reasonable and academic approach towards the same. Glory be to Allah. Brother Imran has a fairly good international exposure and he has traveled to many countries of the world like USA, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Thailand, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain and Kuwait. If God will, after this US visit, he is expected to travel to South Korea and Japan. Thankful to Allah, we have Brother Imran here and Brother Imran is a popular debater and has on several occasions successfully debated many scholars of Christianity and other religions. His debates and talks in English and Urdu languages are available on YouTube and IREF videos and his Facebook page IREF Peace. But this evening, Brother Imran will be only discuss the Muslim perspective of Jesus peace be upon him in Islam and exposing more of commonalities and relationship of Jesus peace be upon him in Islam. So now I take leave for the speaker to begin his talk on the topic Jesus Christ in Islam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد ربش رحلي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل لغدة من لساني يفقه خلي أما بعد رسبكتد إمام صاحب of the ICI Irving Masjid in Texas Sheikh Zia رسبكتد رينارد بجاني my Christian speaker, respected elders in the audience and all my dear brothers and the sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Meaning, may the peace, mercy and blessings of Almighty God, Allah be on all of you. Mashallah, this is my fourth visit to the USA and in my public talks, outside USA, I have always, always said, if I have met the best human beings, kind in their nature, anywhere on earth, it are the Americans. MashaAllah. Believe me, trust me. I love American people a lot. And my father, he says, when I was in my fourth standard, he once suddenly asked me, what do you want to become after you grow up? And I told him I want to become the president of America. <laughs> and, and believe me, I have not lost that hope still. MashaAllah. <laughs> <clears throat> and as far as the subject is concerned, Jesus Christ in Islam, at the very outset of the talk, let me make a point very clear from the Muslim perspective. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe, love and respect Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, as much as he loves, believes and respects Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. As a Muslim, it is an obligation upon me to love Jesus Christ as much as I love Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. As a Muslim, it is an obligation upon me through this book, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word of God, the infallible word of God, the glorious Quran, which makes 1.3 billion Muslims on the face of the earth without an iota of doubt to love, respect and believe in Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. If you observed respectable <coughs> Renaud Bijani in his talk, he was using Allah for Almighty God. And we all know that 
the English language did not exist at the time of Prophet Muhammad when he lived in the 7th century. It was during the 7th century that he proclaimed he is receiving a revelation from Almighty God like prophets before him received revelation from God. And his language was Arabic language. Even today, if you check the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible, you will find that anywhere in the English Bible where you get the word G-O-D, God, it has been used in the Arabic translation of the Bible as Allah. So for the Muslim audience here, let me make the point very clear that when Renaud Bijani was using the word Allah, he was not using the name Allah as described in the glorious Quran, was he, but he was referring Allah as the name which is a translation for G-O-D, God, used in the Arabic translation of the Bible. I began my talk with the recitation of a surah and again, surah is not used in the English Bible. It is a specific term used for the chapters in the Quran. The word chapter is a wrong connotation to be used for the chapters as there are in the Bible. In Quran, we do not have chapters. <laughs> the closest connotation that the Quran has referred is specifically for what you may refer as chapters in the Bible. In the Quran, for those portions, those segments, there are 114 such segments which you may call chapter in the Bible. And each segment, the 114 of them, is referred by a special Arabic word called the Surah. And Surah is a specific name given to the segments of the glorious Quran, 114 segments. And ayat is an Arabic word. It, it means S-I-G-N, sign. And ayat is a singular, ayat is plural. Again, both these terminologies are used in the glorious Quran for the statements. So for example, when I write a book, I may call it a paragraph, I may call it a statement, but the statements of the Almighty God Allah are referred by Allah Himself in the glorious Quran. For example, if you read Surah Yusuf, Surah number 12, Ayat number 1, Ayat number is sign number 1, which you may call as verse in the Bible. So in Bible, it is chapter and verse, but in the glorious Quran in Arabic language, it has been specified for these segments and the statements as Surah and Ayat. Now based on this, so that there is no confusion with the Muslim brothers and sisters here, that the Bible actually doesn't use Surah or Ayat, it is Quran that uses it. But for the convenience, because he comes from an Arabic background from Iraq, he was using those terminologies so that the Muslim brothers and sisters, they have a better understanding of what he was trying to preach from the Bible. Now, if you observed, I started my talk by reciting a Surah, which is Surah number 112 of the glorious Quran. And it is known as Surah Ikhlas. Surah Ikhlas. Ikhlas in Arabic means purity. Purity of faith. The Surah, the segment, number 112, which describes the purity of faith in Almighty God. Now, the background of the revelation of this Surah with the Muslim community is that there were three Christian missionaries. They came to Prophet Muhammad at his time in Medina and they started discussing with him about Islam and what he was preaching actually about Allah. Now, Prophet Muhammad Islam, when he described them, the discussion continued and they stayed back in Medina for about three days. On the third day, that was a Sunday, the Prophet Muhammad, he gave them the permission to perform their holy worship as Sunday is the holy day for the Christian community. He allowed them to perform their rituals in the Masjid al-Nabuwi, which is the second most holiest place for the Muslims on the face of the earth after Kaaba in holy Makkah. And after that, they came back to Prophet Muhammad and they asked him a plain question. They said, O Muhammad, وسلم, meaning may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. O Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. وسلم, you are discussing since three days with us about Almighty God, Allah. And you can observe from the background that these three Christians were not speaking in English. Because Prophet Muhammad, he did not know any language except Arabic language. And these three Christians were Coptic Christians, meaning their mother tongue was Arabic and they were Arab Christians. 
So they asked Prophet Muhammad that three days we are listening to you. You are talking about Islam. You are talking about Allah. All three days when you are talking about Allah, now we have a question with you. Our question is, who is this Allah? Because if you are talking of Allah, as I already said, in Arabic language, the Arab Jews and Christians, Encyclopedia Britannica, it says, if you search on Encyclopedia Britannica, the name Allah, Encyclopedia Britannica, it records that the Coptic Jews and Christians, meaning those Jews and Christians whose mother tongue was Arabic language, they conveniently used Allah as the name for Almighty God whom they believed to be the creator of the universe. This is what Encyclopedia Britannica records. And it says that was the only option for the Arab Jews and Christians to call the Almighty God. And if you observe, the name Allah for the God existed before Prophet Muhammad The name of the father of Prophet Muhammad is Abdullah, meaning the servant of Allah. The people in Makkah, they referred to Holy Kaaba before the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as Baitullah, meaning the house of Allah. So Allah was the only option for them to refer to the God. So these three Christian missionaries who came to meet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they asked, you're talking about Allah, who is this Allah? Because Allah we already believe in. Now who is this Allah? So the revelation came to Prophet Muhammad from Almighty God himself. Allah said, Qul, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul huvallahu ahad, say to them, He is Allah, the only one, meaning to say, He is not from the Trinity, He is not three in one, He is the only one, He is not one in diversity, His unity is not in diversity, His unity is in uniqueness, Qul huvallahu ahad, Allahu samad, meaning the Almighty God, the true Allah is the one who does not depend upon anything but everything besides Allah it purely depends upon the Almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning he is independent of all needs but everything in universe that he created it depends upon the Almighty God and that is as samad in Arabic Allahu samad then the third definition came lam yalid walam yulad he does not have Parents, biological parents who have given birth to him, neither does he give birth to any children. He has no parents and no children. And there is none like unto him. Now this four line definition of Allah in the glorious Quran is the touchstone of theology that the Muslims refer. Meaning for the Muslims, the Almighty God has to be the one that he shall be unique in his unity, he shall be independent of all needs. The moment you depend upon something, then you cannot be the Almighty God. There shall be none equal to the God. There shall be none like him. Meaning to say, to the extent that suppose in my imagination, I imagine that the Holy Father that is generally considered to be the supreme uh, God of the Trinity, he must be like a light or something. Allah says, the moment you think something, he can never be like what you can think. He is beyond your comprehension. The human beings, whenever they perceive anything, their perception is totally dependent upon their five senses. Anything out of their five senses, they cannot perceive. They can just imagine. And even to imagine, you need to use your five of the senses. So Allah says your five senses absolutely cannot comprehend the Almighty God. He is beyond your comprehension. And the God that you believe in, He neither has parents nor does He give birth to any children. So in the context of Islam, we believe that Jesus Christ, may peace be upon Him, is like Prophet Muhammad and many other messengers that came before Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad, but He is not the Son of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he is a mighty messenger and we give high reverence to mother Mary in Islam there is a complete surah in the glorious Quran you will not find any other religious book revering mother Mary to the extent that Quran reveres her there is a complete surah surah number 19 and the title of the surah is surah Maryam meaning surah Mary it's in her reverence and the prophet Muhammad who is by some people claimed to be the writer or author of the Quran 
you will be surprised that in this book the glorious quran not a single family member's name of prophet muhammad is mentioned and the greatest glory given to any woman in universe is not the mother of prophet muhammad is not the daughter of prophet muhammad is not any of the wives of prophet muhammad but it is mother mary if you read surah number 3 surah ale imran imran which is of course my elias my nickname imran was the grandfather maternal grandfather of mother mary and if you observe of isa alayhi salam sorry the father of maryam alayhi salam was imran and there is a surah in the glorious quran by the name surah ale imran meaning the family of imran surah number 3 ayat number 42 where allah says auz billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa iz ghalatil malaikatu ya maryam inna allah hastafaki wa tahraki wastafaki ala nisail alamin and behold the angel said o mary god has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of all nations meaning in entire universe a muslim believes that nobody is more modest than mother mary may peace be upon her that is our belief in mother mary and when it comes to the birth of jesus christ may peace be upon him the quran says that in ali imran surah number 3 ayat number 59 allah says inna isa masala in the allahi kama sali adam the example of isa alaihi salam the example of jesus christ concerning his birth in the sight of almighty god allah is like that of adam may peace be upon him for as allah created adam from dust so did allah create isa alaihi salam in other words allah subhanahu wa taala is educating that allah does not need to create a son for himself and to create isa alaihi salam jesus christ may peace be upon him without a male intervention is very easy for allah because if allah for the first time can create adam without a mother and a father it's not a great issue to create isa alaihi salam only without a father so as a muslim we believe that jesus christ may peace be upon him was born miraculously to mother mary without any male intervention and the entire description of her birth like the gospel of luke chapter number 1 verse number 35 the entire description of mother mary giving birth to isa alaihi salam is mentioned in the glorious quran in ali imran surah number 3 ayat number 45 to ayat number 55 and in surah ali surah maryam surah number 19 ayat number 24 to ayat number 34 these are the two places in the quran where in detail the description of birth of isa alaihi salam is mentioned and what does it say in ayat number 45 surah ali imran surah number 3 allah says the angel said is qalatil malaikatu ya maryam inna allaha yubashshirukka bi kalimatin min husmuhul masihu isabnu maryama wajihan fid dunya wal akhirata min al muqarrabin and the angel said o mary god gives you a glad tiding of a son whose name shall be masi messiah christ jesus the son of mary who shall be greatly esteemed in this life and of those who are closest to allah in akhirah in judgment day he shall be one of the closest uh, with others to almighty god allah subhanahu wa taala maryam alaihi salam responds in ayat number 47 surah al imran surah number 3 she says khalat rabbi she said to her lord oh my lord how can i have a son when no man has ever touched me and the reply came to her came to her from almighty god fa iza khaza amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun when almighty god decides any matter he just says to it be and it is almighty god says he orders something and it happens if it could happen for adam alaihi salam without a mother and a father it was easy for almighty god to create isa alaihi salam only without a father so as a muslim the belief of 1.3 billion muslims together on the earth is that jesus christ may peace be upon him was born miraculously and he was one of the mightiest messengers of allah allah subhanahu wa taala and we like all the jews and the christians believe from the time of adam may peace be upon him till moses may peace be upon him 
continuing till Jesus Christ may peace be upon him and then continuing till Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him and we say according to the Quran Surah Ahzab Surah number 33 Ayat number 40 Makana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Mir Rijalikum Walakir Rasulullahi Waqatam An Nabiyyim Muhammad is not the father of any of you grown men he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets he is the last and final prophet and the last and the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we all know that Jesus says in gospel of John chapter number 14 verse number 6 that I am the truth the way and the life you shall reach God through me the belief of a Muslim is every prophet of Almighty God Every prophet of Almighty God at his time was the way, was the truth and he was the source to lead his people to the Almighty God. So in that sense, we agree that Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, is of course he is the truth from the Almighty God in being the messenger. He is the way from the Almighty God to show to the people the way to the Almighty God and we believe that he guided the people as Almighty God wanted him to guide the people like before him other prophets did so. Coming to the concept of salvation or forgiveness in Islam, it is very simple. The only sin that Allah says will never be forgiven in Islam is associating partners with Allah or saying that Allah has got a begotten son. Except this, Allah says any other sin that you commit before your death, if you seek forgiveness, I will forgive it. And even if this sin, that if you are saying and believing that God has got a begotten son, a biological son or a biological children, and you seek forgiveness before your death, even for that claim, I am ready to forgive you. And about the salvation of the mankind, Islam made it very simple. Allah says in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 17 and 18, Allah will surely accept the repentance from those who repent to him in sincerity. So if you repent in sincerity after committing a sin, Allah says he will readily accept. And in Islam, the beloved prophet in a sahih hadith, in an authentic hadith, he said that many times a man or a woman, they commit a sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the almighty God, covers the sin from other people. It is unknown to others. Unless this man himself discloses it to somebody else and then Allah on day of judgment will say I hid it from others to forgive you but you declared it to others. In other sense in Islam Prophet Muhammad said there is nothing of confess, confessing the sin to anybody. Even if it is the masjid's imam no Muslim comes to him to confess his sin. The Muslim is made to confess his sin sincerely only to the Almighty God and seek his forgiveness. So it's a simple concept of forgiveness in Islam for salvation. If you have committed a sin, seek the forgiveness by seeking forgiveness from the Almighty God who created you and who cherishes and sustains you. The other part is Allah says in Surah Zumar, Surah number 39, Ayat number 53. Kul say, Ya ibadi al lazina, O my servants, O my slaves, Asrafu ala anfusihim. If you have exaggerated in committing sins against your own self, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfuru zunuba jamia. Allah will certainly forgive for you all your sins. Inna hu ghafuru rahim. Most certainly, He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So the salvation concept in Islam is very simple. As a human. I am tempted towards sin, I may commit a sin. And when I commit a sin, I myself am asked to seek forgiveness. And it looks very justified that suppose I have a twin. Suppose I have a twin, my brother, who is totally like me, resembling me. Suppose I have murdered somebody. It is not wise to just give a punishment to my brother who looks my like. It looks unjust. Because he is not the one who has committed the sin. Similarly, as a Muslim, we believe that Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, he sought the forgiveness of the people like all other messengers, like Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Noah, Noah Prophet Moses. He also sought forgiveness for the people, but he would not sacrifice himself for everybody because Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, he guided us towards the Almighty God and taught us to serve him and seek his forgiveness like all other prophets did. And in Islam, to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of Allah is considered the worst of the sins. Many Christian brothers and sisters, they feel offensive 
when a Muslim doesn't greet them with Happy Christmas. One of the reasons, one of the major reasons for a Muslim not to do this is because in the Quran, a Muslim is commanded by Allah in Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, Ayat number 88, 89, 90, 91 and 92. Allah says, وَقَالُوا اتَّقَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَى And they say, they boast, they allege that the most gracious has begotten us. لَقَدْ جَئِتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا It's the dirtiest thing that anyone can utter against the Almighty God. تَقَادُ السَّمَوَاتِ يَتَفَتَّرْنَ مِنْهُ if we give the sense of what they are uttering about God to the heaven, it will burst upon them. If, it, if we give that sense to the earth, it will split and bury them alive. And the mountains, if they get the sense of what they are uttering, saying that Jesus is the son of God, then it will fall to utter ruin. They boasted, they added that most gracious has begotten a son. In ayat number 92, Allah says, in Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, that it does not befit the glory and majesty of the Almighty God to beget the children. Based on these beliefs, if you observe, we Muslims, like all the Christian brothers and sisters, have high reverence and respect for Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, except for the part that when you associate anything with Almighty God Allah, or associate Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, as his son or equal to Allah, we take an objection to it and we don't believe in that. And Allah says in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 171, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Muslims and He wants the Muslims to address the non-Muslim Christian brothers and sisters. Allah says, Ya Ahlul Kitab, O you people of the book, O you Jews and Christians, La taglu fi dinikum. Do not go into excesses of your religion. For at the time of Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, the children of Israel, who are referred as Jews today, they wanted to kill him and they called him the child of fornication. Nauz billah, may Allah forbid. And later, in exaggeration of his love, the people started to equate him with Almighty God and called him the son of God. So Allah says, La taghlu dinakum. Do not go into excesses of your religion. Wala taghulu alallahi illa al-haq. And do not say anything about Almighty God which is untrue. Except the truth, do not speak anything about Almighty God. Innam al-Masih, most certainly Christ Jesus. Innam al-Masih, Isabnu Maryama Rasulullahi. Most certainly Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was a messenger of Allah. Wa kalimatuhu and his word, meaning his command. Al-Qaha ila Maryama wa ruhum minhu Which Allah bestowed upon Mother Mary A spirit proceeding from Him And then Allah says Fa'aminu billahi wa rusulihi All of you believe in Allah and all His messengers Wala taqulu salasa And don't say Trinity In tahu khairul lakum It is best for you if you desist from saying Trinity Innam Allahu ilahu wahid Most certainly your Allah is only one God It does not befit that God to beget a son and everything in the universe belongs to him. Wakafa billahi wakila. And most certainly, Allah is a witness over this. With this, I would like to conclude the talk. Wa akhiru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. So, we have the last portion of the session now, which is the QA session. Uh, you have the index cards in front of you. Uh, if you don't have an index card, Raise your hand and we, uh, we can give you one. And uh, you can pass the questions forward and we can uh, try to answer them. Uh, you can uh, put on the index card who you want uh, to answer that question. Okay. <clears throat> if God is just, isn't it injustice to kill the innocent in order to atone for the sins of others and this is one question and did Jesus Christ preach Trinity what authority did Paul have to introduce Trinity to Christianity who's this uh, answer for I'm s supposing Renaud <laughs> well it's 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 more like this is for Renaud I think both of them seem to be for Renaud if you think about the context of the questions Um, so, uh, 
by what authority did Paul have to introduce Trinity to Christians? So, again, the subject of tonight is uh, Isa al-Masih, or Jesus Christ. So, in this case, uh, uh, Second Timothy, it is part of the handout, it says all scripture is God-breathed. That means when, whether it's Paul, whether it's Isaiah, whether it's uh, Musa or Moses, all scripture is God breathed. That's what I believe, that's what we Christians believe. And in Revelation, uh, uh, it said that scripture was ended. So those things come the way we, I believe it, as Christians believe it, is that all scripture is God breathed and from the beginning to the end, it says, at least in the Holy Bible, is that scripture cannot be broken, God's word is flawless. So that's what we believe. So that's the authority and that would be, uh, uh, and that's the thing, is that by that authority, as far as Jesus Christ, uh, as a Christian, then we believe that there is, uh, there are a lot of commonalities with my brothers and sisters in Islam, but it does come down, like Brother Imran said, it comes down to one thing, and that is, who is Isa al-Masih? Is he truly Allah? And as far as the other question is, uh, uh, if uh, uh, God is just, well, that's the thing, is what uh, the Holy Scripture is clearly saying. It's because he is just, he had to die for us in order to fulfill his eternal law that he uh, revealed right from the beginning. And because we can't do it. And if he looks at some works versus others, so he, to be just, he made everything through Isa al-Masih, who he considers is himself. Okay, this is <clears throat> probably for Brother Imran. Do Muslims believe that God gave or revealed to Moses the sacrificial system and the teaching that only through shedding of blood can sins be forgiven? This idea fills the teaching in the Torah. If so, why is there no sacrifice for sins in Islam? Brother Imran, would you like to take it? Uh, I prefer, uh, Sheikh, if the questioner would write their name also because it enables the uh, person to answer according to the background, then inshallah. Thank you. Brother, I have the question that uh, do I believe that the God Almighty, He wanted to forgive sins by shedding the blood? And if that be true, then do we believe that Moses, may peace be upon him, was given a law through the Torah that shedding of blood is must for forgiving of sins? Yes, I believe that shedding of blood is required for the forgiveness of sins, but it is not the criteria in Islam for seeking forgiveness of the sins. If you check the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, he did not obligate every individual Muslim to sacrifice that we do in Bakrit. Because in your context, you are trying to say that when Muslims in Bakrit, when they sacrifice the goat or the ram, they do it with the intention that this blood is being sacrificed so that my sins are forgiven. So Islamically, it is only for those who are eligible. And in Islam, it is basically to remember the obedience of Abraham, may peace be upon him, towards the Almighty God. What Muslims are reminded is, you see how merciful Allah is. He commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son. When Abraham took the son, the son was removed by Archangel Gabriel and a ram was put there. This ram was put to indicate the mercy of Almighty God that Allah doesn't want to shed the blood of human beings for the forgiveness of their sins. What Allah requires and Allah makes it, makes it clear again in Surah Hajj. Surah number 22, ayat number 37, Allah says, When you sacrifice the animal, it is neither the blood nor the meat that reaches Allah. It is your God piety that reaches Him. Because after a Muslim sacrifices in Bakrid, the Prophet commanded the Muslims, recommended the Muslims to make three parts of the sacrificial meat. One goes to the relatives, one goes to the poor, the other third is remaining with the person who has sacrificed. Meaning, the meat is used by us, it benefits us. The benefit of the sacrificial animal is reaching us. It doesn't reach the Almighty God. What Allah says is, I want you to remember the obedience of Abraham, may peace be upon him. Had I made Abraham sacrifice his own son, then commanded the same to all of you, none of you would have been able to fulfill it. So it's a mercy that needs to be remembered. So in Islam, shedding blood for 
forgiveness of sin is not a criteria. As I said, Allah makes it very clear. In Surah Zumar, Surah number 39, Ayat number 53, Ya ibadiyya lazina asrafu ala anfusim. O my servants who committed excesses against your own soul. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair the mercy of Allah. Inna allaha yaghfuru zunuban jami'a. And Renaud knows Arabic. Allah says, Zunub is a major sin. Zunub and Jamia, he will forgive all your major sins. So if he is forgiving major sins, minors are by default included in it. Zunub in Arabic means all major and minor. Jamia, completely, he will forgive your sins. Seek his forgiveness. That's what Allah requires in Islam. These things, yes, it is a ritual, but not a criteria in Islam for seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope I answered that question. There's a question for a note. What is the difference between works and faith in Christianity? What is the difference between works and faith in Christianity? Thank you. Well, uh, in uh, the story of Ibrahim in Taqween in Genesis, uh, uh, it tells us that Abraham believed Allah when he told him to go. And he believed Allah when he told him, I'm going to give you a son, even at uh, your wife is 100 years old. And it was credited to him as righteousness, is what Allah says. So for us, when we believe in Isa al-Masih, who is Allah himself for us, then it is credited for us as righteousness, and that's how the salvation happens. So uh, uh, even though Allah can just say you are forgiven, as I said, and it's in your handout, for us in the scripture, it, we must believe in the sacrifice of Allah himself, then everybody, that's the way that that perfect balance of love justice, fairness is met in scripture. So that belief in uh, throughout the Holy Bible, including in Hebrews uh, chapter uh, 11 and 12, it says, as he believed, that was credited for him as righteousness. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question is for Brother Imran. What was Allah's purpose in making Jesus' birth divine? Meaning, miraculous birth. Why wasn't he just born in a natural way? And this question is from a person named Jeremy. Brother Jeremy has asked the question, what was the purpose of giving a miraculous birth to Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, and not a natural birth? What was it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show through it? That's a very nice question, basically. First of all, for the Muslims, Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayat number 72, Allah says, that because Jesus is given a miraculous birth and he performed many miracles that we Muslims also believe. If you read Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, Ayat number 49, Allah says that Jesus gave life to the dead, but by Allah's permission. He healed those who were born blind lepers and lepers, but by Allah's permission. Like many messengers of God did miracles, but by the God's will. Similarly, Jesus did it by the will of the Almighty God. So that the Muslims do not get mesmerized, hypnotized by others and exaggerate him to be the son of God or equal to God. Allah says in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayat number 72, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ Whosoever said that Allah is Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, they disbelieved. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ Instead, Christ Jesus said, Ya Bani Israel, Abudu Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum. O children of Israel, worship Allah who is my God and your God, my Lord and your Lord. Inna hu may yushrik billahi. Whoever associate a partner with Allah, Fakad haram Allahu alayhi jannah. Allah will make heaven haram upon him, forbidden for him. Wama wahunnar will be thrown into hellfire. Wama lil zalimina min ansar. These transgressors who transgressed against their limits in believing the God will never find a helper and protector in here after when they are punished. This is the Muslim belief. Then Allah wants the Muslims to ponder in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayat number 75. Allah again wants us to ponder that Jesus and Mother Mary cannot be the Almighty God. Allah says, Mal Masihu ibn Maryam illa Rasul khad khalaq min khablihi Rasul. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger like many messengers before him. Wa ummuhu siddiqa. And his mother was a truthful woman. Kana yakulani tu'am. They both ate food. Meaning to say that Almighty God 
is the sustainer. He himself doesn't eat. Mother Mary and Jesus, they ate food. Kana ya kulane to'am. They both ate food. Unzur, kaifa nubayyanu lahumul ayat. Look, how clear we make our signs unto you. Summanzur, have another look. Anna you fakun, where are you getting perverted away? Allah is trying to say that if you eat and drink, you cannot be Almighty God. Allah says in Surah Zariyat, Surah number 51, Ayat number 56 and 57, We created all mankind and the jinn to worship Allah alone. And He does not ask the mankind to provide Him sustenance, no, nor to feed Him. Inna Allaha huwa razzaqu zul quwwatil mateen. Most certainly He is Allah who provides you the food. So anybody who eats food, drinks water, cannot be the Almighty God because they become dependent upon something to live. Based on this, if you observe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, not to make it a divine birth. It's not a divine birth, it's a miraculous birth. Why did Allah do that? One of the things Allah again said in Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, Ayat number 22 is, Allah said, it does not befit the slaves to question Almighty God. For example, in an army, there is a rule. Do or die. Don't ask why. Because the subordinates, generally they can't answer, they can't realize and understand the decision taken by a commander-in-chief. So the subordinate, if he's asked to fire, the subordinate, he feels, no, why shall I fire? I'm taking the life of a person. And he says, boss, why shall I fire? The boss will fire this guy. He'll say, just do the order that has been set to you. So Allah says, it does not befit the human being to question the decisions of Almighty God. Why did Allah do this? So Allah says in Surah Mulk, Surah number 67, Ayat number 1 and 2, We created life and death as an examination for you. So the examination is for three communities through Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. One is the Jewish community, the second is the Christian community, the third is the Muslim community. This is what Allah said in Surah Nisa, Ya Ahl al-Kitabi, La taglu fi dinakum. Do not go into excess of your religion, O people of the book. Neither is Jesus a son of a fornicatress or an adulteress. He is the son of a very modest woman, the most modest in the universe, Mother Mary, may peace be upon her. And Allah says, because he is born miraculously, he is not equal to God or a begotten son of God. For the Muslims it has been said, this miraculous birth of Jesus is an examination for mankind to test them in their belief whether they take him as a messenger or exaggerate him over the messengerhood or degrade him calling him evil names. Nauz Billah, may Allah forbid. I hope I answered that question brother. Uh, quite a few people have asked this question. Uh, it's on four or five different cards. This is for Renaud. Uh, where did Jesus say, say that I am God or Son of God in the Bible? So basically he's asking for a clear verse which says God or Son of God in the Bible. Well, uh, Jesus did not directly in anywhere say I am Allah or God. In John chapter 1 that we read is a summary of it where Allah reveals that uh, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And then it says and He dwelt among us, became flesh and that everything was created through Him and by Him and nothing was created except by Him. And when right before His crucifixion they came, the Jews came and were telling Him, hey we follow our father Abraham. Jesus said the clearest indication that he is Allah by saying, before Abraham was, I am. And that goes right back to the first time that Allah revealed himself to Moses, right back to Genesis. When, jo when Moses asked him, who are you from the burning bush? He said, I am who I am. So at that point, when the Jews heard him say that, they said, Crucify him, for he has committed blasphemy. So uh, uh, throughout scripture for us Christians, throughout the New Testament, the, w the main reason why they crucified Jesus is because it was very clear to them that he was claiming to be Allah. Through verses like, I am. This is a question for Imran. The Quran says to believe in the word of Jesus. Okay, so the Quran tells us, to believe that the Prophet Jesus was the Messenger of God and his words were written a hundred years before the Prophet Muhammad. 
Why then do Muslims re reject what is said during Christ's baptism? This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And this question is, I think it's Tom or, I'm not sure it's Tom or Tim. It's not written clearly. Brother has asked a question that why do the Muslims deny when it is clearly mentioned even 100 years before Jesus Christ the people started to believe that he is the son of God. That is what Brother Tim or Brother Tom asked. Brother, historically if you read the history of the concept of Trinity you will come to know that it was only in 395 Christian era that King Augustine and Constantinople officially accepted the concept of Trinity otherwise Unitarian belief was dominant till 395 years after Jesus Christ may peace be upon him. Now after that when the concept of believing in Son of God comes we as Muslims because I am a student of comparative religion I try to understand the faith not just through Quran but even other religious scriptures and now when I read the Holy Bible Jesus Christ may peace be upon him has an answer about that particular concept of the Son of God. For example, when you read Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 30, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. The next verse, verse number 31, the Jews picked up the stones to pelt at him. Verse number 32, Gospel of John chapter number 10, Jesus Christ may peace be upon him, he asks them, for what sin do you pelt stones at me? Do I not show you the good things in the name of the Father who has sent me? Verse number 33, they reply, We do not hit at you for the good things you show in the name of the God, but because of the blasphemy that you say you are the Son of God. Verse number 34, Jesus replies to them and he says, Is it not mentioned in your scriptures that whosoever does the work of God are the sons of God? Meaning at the time of Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, according to the Holy Bible itself, there the terminology son of God was a common usage. For example, in our time today, when we go in the court of law to the judge, we say, oh my Lord. When we say, oh my Lord to the judge, nobody is standing in the court will ever say, I'm trying to say that this judge is almighty God, the Lord. It's a usage of language. So this is how that usage was used at that time. And what Allah says in the Quran is that Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, was absolutely not killed on the cross. Allah says in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 157 and 158, And they say that they killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. Neither did they kill him, nor did they crucify him. Something of doubt happened before them. Whosoever doubts about this matter, they only speak conjecture without evidence. They have no proof that he was killed. For a surety, Jesus was not killed. Instead, Allah lifted him up alive. Inna Allah ka naziz and hakima. Most certainly, Allah is all powerful and all wise. So, based on these teachings, our understanding is Jesus was a mighty messenger. He was not the son of the God, and son of God was a common usage at his time. And what Prophet Muhammad came and taught to the people was not on his own authority, but it was the same authority who spoke from the time of Adam till the time of Muhammad Sallam. That is Almighty God, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, without any son without any daughter, without any parents and without any associate to him. It was the same authority and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam clarified about this. I hope I answered that question. It's for the, the Muslim representative and the, I think let's uh, uh, address Renaud with this. There are three questions. What do you mean by saying Jesus Christ died for us? Number one. Number two, we have belief uh, which is called Iman, what is the Christian faith? And number three, what is the purpose of religious pictures and images in Christianity? Are they supposed to represent God? Is it possible to make a picture of God? 
and this is possibly referring to, alluding to the issue of the Ten Commandments, that thou shalt not make any graven images about God. So basically referring to that. So, sweet. I will need to see that card to remember all the questions. Okay. <laughs> this one is it? Yes. Okay. Um, so, what do we mean by uh, uh, saying Jesus died for us? Well, again, that's, that's the, uh, the whole essence of what I believe as a Christian. And uh, that's what the Holy Scripture, the Holy Bible tells us, is that uh, for, apart from Jesus, there is no redemption of sin. And again, the reason why we go right back to uh, Romans 3 uh, that, uh, that I shared with you is that through Jesus which is the sacrifice of Allah himself, his righteousness, his love, his fairness, his justice, everything is revealed because from the beginning, we go right to Genesis for us, uh, we see that uh, it took one sin and humanity isn't back uh, in paradise yet. And because the whole point of all scripture is to point us toward the fact that Allah himself is coming to say, I'm going to redeem you. And to us, to me as a Christian, that's the most beautiful thing. It is God demonstrating his love, his righteousness, his justice to say, you can't save yourself, but I save you. But if I just say you are forgiven, then where is the justice? Where is the mercy? Where is the forgiveness? When I do it that way, that's what the whole point of the scripture and those scripture are right there with you. And uh, uh, what, uh, let's see, what, uh, again, pictures and so on, that's not really the topic for tonight. Uh, but uh, Brother Imran said it very well earlier tonight. We can't imagine Allah. He is infinite. I can't, I can't put my hand around that. I have a finite mind. I'm going to understand Allah. The only way I understand Allah is how he reveals himself through scripture. That is it. Because my mind, I've had, heard Imam Zia here say it so many times. And that is this. It's like my mind is a little paper cup. How can the infinite Allah, if, if he even tries to put a drop in me, I will explode trying to understand him. So I have to do it by faith. And my faith as a Christian is how he reveals himself in the Holy Bible. And I go with that with faith. So when he says there is no redemption of sin except through the shedding of blood, which is in Jesus Christ, then I look at that scripture and I as a Christian say, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. This is a question for Brother Imran. Some pagans accuse the Prophet of learning the Qur'an from a Roman blacksmith who is a Christian staying at the outskirts of Mecca. That's the first question. And number two, is it not true that Prophet Muhammad, he copied the Qur'an from the Bible? Number three, I have heard that the Arabic version of the Bible was not present at the time of Prophet Muhammad. Okay, so I think that's, that was the question over here. And doesn't your Qur'an mention that Jesus is Kalimatullah, the word of Allah, as well as Ruhullah, the spirit of Allah, indicating his divinity? So these are the questions, basically, certain accusations that are uh, focused against Muslims, and particularly the Qur'an, and the copying of the Qur'an uh, allegedly from the Bible. What is the answer to that? For the first three questions that were asked, that uh, is it not true that uh, Muhammad Sallam had taken it from a blacksmith or a goldsmith or a Roman blacksmith or copied it from the Bible and uh, is it not true that the Bible was not there at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallam? So these three questions are almost the same and the answer is very simple for all of you to understand. Muhammad Sallam, Prophet Muhammad, according to again Encyclopedia Britannica, it says from all historical records available on the life of Prophet Muhammad, it is confirmed that he was a person who did not know how to read and write. And the people for 40 years of his life in Makkah, they knew him as as sadiq and Al-Amin. Believe me, in Arabic language, again, Renaud would correct me because I, as mother tongue, do not speak Arabic language. as sadiq is the superlative degree. Al-Amin is a superlative degree. as sadiq it means the most truthful. It's a superlative degree. Al-Amin, the most trustworthy. And Encyclopedia Britannica says, 
बिफोर प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सेड दैट रिविलेशन ऑफ गॉड इज कमिंग टू मी थ्रू आर के एंजिल जेब्रेल दैट इज कुरान इज बींग रिविल टू मी फोर्टी ईयर्स ऑफ इज लाइफ पीपल इन मक्का दे रिफर टू हिम एज द मोस्ट ट्रूथफुल द मोस्ट ट्रस्ट वर्दी हिस कैरेक्टर्स दे से दे वर द बेस्ट एंड दिस पर्सन हैड ही कॉपीड इट See, he would have been too intelligent to do the copying. Now, Billah, may Allah forbid, because he was surrounded by Jews and Christians in Medina. In Medina, there were a lot of Jews and Christians at his time. He should have actually pleased them by speaking what pleases them, but he is speaking something totally different from them. For the Jews, it is a confirmed belief that Jesus was crucified. For the Christians, it is a confirmed belief that Jesus is crucified, and Prophet Muhammad, through the Quran, Surah Nisa, Surah number four, ayat number one fifty-seven to ayat number one fifty-nine, he declares through the authority of Allah that Jesus is not crucified; he is not killed; he will come back again. Surah Zukhruf, Surah number forty-three, ayat number sixty-one, Allah says Jesus is made a sign before day of judgment. So all Muslims too, like the Christians, believe. that jesus before the day of judgment will certainly come and he will judge between the people how for us muslims how will he judge surah nisa surah number 4 ayat number 159 allah says that it is eminent it is imminent that the christians and the jews believe in him before he dies meaning we also believe that he will come back had muhammad sallam copied it from the bible he would have also copied it in the quran that jesus died on the cross he did not do that they were saying he is the son of god he says no he is not the son of god he is only a mighty messenger of allah what is copying copying is it should be 100% the same but prophet muhammad did not do that historically expecting that he did this again raises many questions in the words of an orientalist he said that to believe that prophet muhammad was an imposter raises more problems for us than it solves them why if prophet muhammad has copied it from the bible then there are few ayat in the quran about which morris bukel in his book the quran the bible and the science he says there are more than 1000 ayat in the quran dealing with modern science of which 750 plus ayat the science has confirmed to be in compatibility and not contradiction with the quran but the remaining 250 science is not advanced enough to confirm or reject them to be scientific or unscientific how could prophet muhammad an unlettered person who does not know how to read and write suddenly copy this book and he is doing it for 23 years he did not get quran like isa alaihi salam got injil or musa alaihi salam got the tablets of the tawrah 23 long years a book is revealed and allah is inviting this is a unique book believe me The Quran invites the people who do not believe in it in Surah Nisa surah number 4 ayat number 82 afala yatadabbarun alquran do you not read the quran with care wala kana min indi ghairi allah lawajaduhu fi ikhtilafan kathira had this quran been from anyone besides allah there would have been discrepancies in it it's an invitation take the book disprove it with the discrepancies allah says in surah ankabut surah number 29 ayat number 42 to 45 If you would have known how to read and write, O Prophet, then the people of vanity might have doubted that you authored the book. But the people who have knowledge, they can reflect to the ayat of the Quran, and they can assuredly believe that this is not written by you, but is a word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And rightly said, the first compiled Arabic Bible, that work was done only in the ninth to tenth century. Bits and pieces may have been available. But if you read the Quran, the Quran nowhere is anti-Christ. Also, it is not anti-Christ. It reveres Christ, loves Christ. Only two, three places it corrects the belief for the Muslims that Jesus is not the begotten Son of God. And we all know, as I said, I am a student of comparative religion. The belief of Jesus being the begotten Son was according to the King James Version, the first English Bible. book gospel of john chapter number 3 verse number 16 it was mentioned there that jesus and god gave the only begotten son to the world revised standard version of the bible it took away that verse and it said that it was an interpolation in the main bible it is the word of human being and it is not the word of god then 
the belief of trinity was according to first epistle of john chapter number 5 verse number 7 8 and 9 which said and in the kingdom of heaven bear three names the father the holy ghost and the holy son and these three are one again in the revised standard version if you check this verse has been completely taken away as an interpolation so meaning to say prophet muhammad sallam has not copied because today the top scholars research scholars of bible are confirming that these beliefs are actually interpolation in the book that is supposed to be the word of god believed by christian community and it has been revised many times i hope i answered that question unfortunately we're out of time i'd like to thank renault and he's all of our guests that came today our christian brothers and sisters and i'd like to thank brother imran coming to us all the way from india enlightening us with his knowledge and like i mentioned right at the very beginning the doors of this mosque are open to all of our christian guests uh, especially on sundays we have a special arrangement for people to come in and have a tour of the mosque if your friends couldn't make it, you're welcome to bring them again on sunday thank you for coming and uh, uh thank you for for listening and bearing with us and if we have any shortcomings please forgive us jazakumullah uh, khairan aisa ibn maryam ya habib muhammadi bashrta ya ruh al ilah bi ahmadi salla alayka allah fi ayyihi